How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be continuing my Sharks of Summer series. Sharks of Summer is a series I do around here where once a week, at least once uh, during the summer, I take a look at a shark movie. And summer is wrapping up. Um, I like to try to keep this going until October so I can switch it over to Zach's Halloween Marathon. But we have a few more weeks, and in turn, I want to scratch off a few things from the list that I really want to get done. And one of those is finishing this Meg A Shark Collection. I worked on this during the first Sharks of Summer, and I got a little more than half of it, so I wanted to finish it off this year. And as of right now, I only have two movies left. This movie and Malibu Shark Attack. So, working, trying to finish those before the summer runs out. Uh, but anyway, this movie, we're talking about Shark Man from 2001. This is directed by Brian Meese and stars William Forsyth, Hunter Tylo, and horror legend Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs is really great. He's obviously famous for Reanimator. If you haven't seen Reanimator yet, uh, go check it out. Really good Stuart Gordon movie. Um, and he is one of the highlights of this movie. Sadly, though, one of the few highlights. And, and I want to say, you know, I've done Sharks of Summer two years now. I've seen a bunch of shark movies. And a lot of the bad ones are low to micro budget nothing burgers. You know, they don't have the budget to do anything, not much happens, not much shark attacks. That's what your standard bad shark movie is like. But this is kind of a rarity, as in it's a bad shark movie, but not because it's a nothing burger. It's a bad shark movie because it's a, a bad movie. And I do want to elaborate on that, but first, the pros. One, obviously, Jeffrey Combs is great. As always, whenever you need a good creepy villain, and especially a mad scientist, he will go in there and give it his all. So even though the movie around him isn't great, still get Jeffrey Combs. Uh, secondly, Shark Man. It's a cool concept that makes this shark movie a little bit different. It's not just your regular shark movie. It's more of a, a creature feature. It's... The shark, hammerhead, human body, arms and legs and tail. It's a cool design, but you don't get to see him that much. And I guess that transitions into the cons. This movie suffers three fatal flaws. Three things that really kill this movie. One, the tone. This is a case of... It's too cheesy to be taken serious, but too serious to be a good cheesy movie. You're doing Shark Man. This should be dumb fun, but the movie keeps insisting it's a serious action movie. And that really does suck. Two, the editing really kills this. The editing, and I guess the shot choice too, because an editor can only work with what they're given, but this movie does very, very bad, shaky, choppy editing to the point where it really is unwatchable during its action sequences. And I, and I don't use that word lightly. It really is uh, pretty much unwatchable. I found myself continuing to space out because I couldn't really focus on what was going on because it was just action. And yeah, it, it, it doesn't track at all. And sadly, this movie, like I said earlier, fancies itself an action movie. However, that means a large portion of this movie is going to be unwatchable. The third fatal flaw with this movie is this is a breeding creature feature movie. I don't know why this is such a subgenre, a creature feature with a breeding aspect, but... Here we are again, and so Jeffrey Combs thinks shark people are the future of humanity, so he says, 
shark man needs to breed with some human woman, and yeah, I, I wouldn't have included this plot point myself. It makes the movie way darker, but again, going back to the tonal problem, is it keeps insisting it's an action movie, and it doesn't realize that including a plot element this dark should make you become a a grungy, darker movie. But no, no, it's just this super heavy subject matter carelessly thrown into a B action movie. And that really is not a good idea. Um, anyway, I guess without further ado, I'm going to do a little bit of a plot summary. I do want to analyze a few plot points as we go along, but I'll be avoiding major spoilers, so I'm not going to talk about the ending or any uh, last-minute twist. But anyway, we open up with this woman. She is the head uh, biologist at this really big company, so she is kind of a big deal, and her boss calls her in and says, we've gotten word from this scientist, that will be Jeffrey Combs, that he's cracked the stem cell code. He sent us enough information that we know he is onto something, but if we want the full thing, we have to go to his private island and see what's up. Yeah, Jeffrey Combs has been, like, disgraced for, like, five years, yet he can somehow afford a private island? I, I don't know. I guess he's getting major money from the patents. I, I don't know. But anyway, they go to the island. There's a little group of them. There's her, her boss, her new boyfriend, and... A bunch of red shirts, if we're honest. They go and they meet Combs, and he does this speech about how sharks are the key to unlocking stem cells. Sharks never get cancer. Sharks could live forever if they're not killed. A bunch of that stuff. It's actually this weird shark movie trope. Maybe Deep Blue Sea started it. But in shark movies, sharks are magic, and they hold the key to all medical knowledge inside of them. I don't know why, but this isn't a ton of shark movies. But one twist early on is the main girl actually knows Jeffrey Combs' character because she was engaged to his son, but Jeffrey Combs' son has died, and she hasn't seen him since. However... He didn't exactly die, because Jeffrey Combs' son was one of his first experiments, and he didn't die, he got turned into Shark Man. And then Jeffrey Combs, after he basically explains this, lifts up a little, uh, I don't, what do you call it, a blind of some kind, and you see a tank in the room, and in that tank, Shark Man swimming around, uh, Jeffrey Combs' son, and they're all shocked. He's crazy. What's going on? And yeah, this reveal happens a little too quick. You really could have had some tension going. You really could have built up to it. But no, it just happens really quick. And then Jeffrey Combs basically turns into a James Bond villain and gets all his guys out of there, locks them in the room, fills the room up with water, and is going to let Shark Man out. Luckily for the uh, heroes, one of the guards happens to drop his gun, and they escape. Yeah, there's a bunch of little things like this. A bunch of little plot conveniences of, yeah, this is just going to happen so the movie can keep going, you know? One of the guards drops his gun, then they need to escape, and they're on the roof, and they take off a few of their overshirts, and it makes like 30 feet of rope. Yeah, there's things like that. You know, a boat needs to explode. Well, guess what? It's going to have a ton of explosive barrels on it for no reason. They need to handle Shark Man. There's a cabinet over there labeled Shark Control. It's... This movie has a lot of plot conveniences in it. Uh, but anyway, they escape. Shark Man's going to be hunting them, as well as there's random... Little Shop of Horrors plants in this movie. Not really the Ichu, more the vines. But yeah, there's 
random plants that don't really do anything, so I wonder why they were thrown in there. But more prominently, guards. There is a bunch of soldiers. Jeffrey Combs has essentially a private army, and they really take the focus away from Shark Man and make him seem less scary. I mean, would the Predator be scary if he had an army of underlings? Not really. If it was just Shark Man, maybe a few guards around Combs, if it was just Shark Man, it would have kept the focus on him and it would have made him scarier because that's what you're dealing with the whole time. But with these guards, it feels like Shark Man needs help. Of course, the two reasons why they did this is one, again, this movie makes the dumb mistake of fancying itself an action movie instead of a creature feature. So we're going to have guards and explosions and stuff. And two, humans are so much cheaper than Shark Man. It's a lot cheaper to have a human enemy than it is to actually use the creature. And anyway, from there, typical, kind of most dangerous game running around this island and eventually trying to defeat Shark Man, defeat Combs, and, you know, trying to save the day. But from here, let's go ahead and analyze those problems I hinted at at the beginning. Uh, the tone. This movie should be cheesy. If you don't want to make a cheesy movie, uh, don't make Shark Man. The concept of a big human shark, it's a cheesy concept. Go ahead and embrace it because we can't take you seriously unless you work really hard at it. And this movie doesn't embrace its cheesiness. It doesn't have fun. It doesn't go, ah, we're a creature feature. Here's Shark Man. Rawr. It doesn't really do that. It insists it's a serious movie and it insists it's an action movie, not a creature feature. Both really bad ideas. It's too cheesy to be taken seriously and too serious to be cheesy fun. And that really, really sucks and really does kill it. Um, and then talking about tone, they had to throw in the forced impregnation subplot. Jeffrey Combs thinks the sharks are the future of humanity, the new generation for the Earth, even though Shark Man's clearly just a dumb beast. Like, he keeps going, ah, oh, Shark Man really is human, guys, and it, no, he, no, he's humanoid, but clearly, I, I don't know what's going on here, but Jeffrey Combs says Shark Man needs to mate with woman, and yeah. You do this, it should be a darker movie, and the fact that they don't know that this is like way too heavy subject matter to throw into a B-action movie, it, it does suck. But on top of that, they say, hey, Shark Man is her ex-fiance, Shark Man probably still has feelings for her, and that would make the breeding easier which means we have a horribly awkward case of Chekhov's gun here. Having Shark Man setting up this scene, basically telling you there's going to be a scene where they're going to try to impregnate the main character with Shark Man, you basically told us this scene's coming, we have that looming over our heads, but we also know whenever it looks like there's a chance they're going to get out, we know they're not going to because they haven't done the Shark Man impregnation scene. This whole part of the movie didn't need to be there. Uh, but anyway, after that, Shark Man himself, he's a cool design. I think there is a practical and a CGI Shark Man. And yeah, Hammerhead Shark Head, that's really cool. The two eyes off to the side. They even get some expression in them, you know? And yeah, big, cool, giant monster body. I, I wish we got a better look at this thing, but we don't. This movie doesn't have faith in its choreography and in its creature. And in turn, whenever you get an action scene and whenever you get a Shark Man scene, chop it, shake it, scramble it up. And in turn, Shark Man scenes, action scenes, 
these are both essentially unwatchable. Now, the editing isn't great throughout the rest of the movie either. There's one scene I can think of where a character's on a boat and goes down some stairs, and then they cut to this huge laboratory, but it's an unrelated scene. But the way they cut it, it looks like he went downstairs in this boat to an impossibly big laboratory. The editing here isn't great, and again, that also comes from the shot choices of the director. What did, what did they actually shoot? What did they have to work with? But this action cinematography is really bad. The thing is, action is a story. This happened, so this happened, so this happened, but because we don't see it as like a regular plot, a lot of people forget that action has a story behind it, and it's your job to convey that story. And they really don't get the flow of action. For example, there's a, a part where he goes, I'm going to lay down some suppressive fire while you guys blast your way to the chopper. If you're laying down suppressive fire, why do they need to blast their way to the chopper? The suppressive fire should be preventing them from having to do that. But they don't understand the steps in storytelling and action. And you see that in this movie, they see action as a concept and as, you know, sort of an energy but not a story. So, oh no, action, bam, 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 bam. No idea what's going on. In turn, when there's no story, no plot to follow, your mind really does wonder. So many times during these action scenes, I found myself spacing out and having to go back and rewatch them because it really isn't super clear what's going on. It's so shaky, it's such an abstract mess they really are unwatchable, and I found myself just waiting for the action scenes to be over so that I could see what happened based on the aftermath. And yeah, like I said earlier, this movie fancies itself an action movie instead of a creature feature, so there's a ton of action, and in turn, a ton of unwatchable minutes in this movie. And that really, really does kill it. Now, I don't want to say this movie is absolutely horrible. It definitely is on the lower end of shark movies, but we still do have an original concept. Half shark, half man. That's cool. I would love to see someone do this concept right. And we also have Jeffrey Combs, who, as always, gives it his all, even when he's in a bad movie. So there is some stuff to like, but this movie really does have problems, and I really wish it was better. But anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a playlist at the bottom, and uh, since it's actually late in Sharks of Summer, I'll leave the Sharks of Summer 2022 playlist up here. And you can click on that and see all my Sharks of Summer videos for this year in order. So anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Uh, Sharks of Summer playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.